Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, a core four maths A level video. This is the sixth and final one on partial fractions where we deal with improper algebraic fractions. As always, with your uh, A level studies, do check out the YouTube channel, Twitter or Google Plus if you need more help. Just to make things clear, um, we're doing the Edexcel course, it's my sixth video on this topic, but this work would be applicable to most other uh, A-level maths modules. Um, just to point out what we're, we've done and just to show you we've finished, we've done rational functions, partial, partial fractions, denominators not more complicated than repeated linear terms, partial fractions to include uh, two linear terms and three linear terms, and the case where there are three terms and one of them is repeated. Now, it then says the degree of the numerator may equal or exceed the degree of the denominator. Application to integration and differentiation of series, we'll do that later. But it does say here that uh, quadratic factors uh, will not be required in the denominator, such as x squared plus a. So in this particular video, we're just going to cover things off by talking about uh, uh, numerators and denominators and where the degree of the numerator is bigger or equal to that of the denominator. So that leads on very well to talk about an improper fraction. Well, with numbers, the following types of ideas are improper fractions. Okay, that's an improper fraction. That's an improper fraction. That there is an improper fraction. So with numbers, an improper fraction is where the top number is bigger than the bottom number, or the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay. Now, with algebra, it's a very similar idea. Suppose I had um, a fraction as follows. x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 7. Now, the order, order of a polynomial is the degree of the highest power. This has order 1, this has order 2 because it's a quadratic. The top order is smaller than the bottom, so this is a usual fraction. However, if I had something like this, x squared plus 2x plus 7 all over x plus 1, this in, in flipped, this has order 2, this has order 1, the top has order bigger than the bottom, and that's called an improper fraction. Okay, and similarly, um, uh, if they're the same, it's still called an improper fraction. So something like 2x plus 1 over x minus 1, although they both have order 1, that's called improper as well. Okay, now, that's what improper algebraic fractions are. I'm just going to rub that out for now. just want to explain to you how these arise in partial fractions. Suppose we had the following. Suppose we had a um, linear term on top, ax plus b, over a linear term on the bottom, let's say cx plus d, for some numbers a and b, c and d. That's an improper fraction. They both have order 1. And if you were to split this up into, into sort of partial fractions, as it were, then you would always get they have the same order. Okay, um, That's order 1. That has order 1. The highest power is <coughs> x to the power of 1. The 1 take away 1 is 0. So you would always get a polynomial of the power 0, namely a constant term. And you would get another constant over the denominator cx plus d. That will always be the case. Now, I'm going to take this a step further. This is just a rule here. Imagine I had a quadratic on top. And let's just say I had a linear on the bottom. The order of the top is 2. The order of the bottom is 1. It's a quadratic. That's a linear. OK, 2 take away 1 is 1. So I would always get a linear, a, uh, something of order 1, OK, at most, uh, left over in this place. So I'd get something of the form ax plus b. That's a linear term. And I'd get c over um, this denominator here, um, little cx. Okay. 
Um, let's take it one step further. Say I had ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d all over, um, let's call it um, <clears throat> ex plus f here. I have a cubic on top. I have a linear on the bottom. 3 take away 1 is 2, so that would leave me with uh, something that looks like a quadratic. So I'd have an ax squared plus bx plus c term here, plus a algebraic fraction d over ex plus f. Okay? And these ideas continue in the way you would expect them to continue. For example, and we're going to move on and now and do some examples, just say if I had something like uh, 3x cubed minus 7x plus 3 all over x plus 1, x plus 2. Okay, I've got a cubic on top. I've got a quadratic on bottom. 3 take away 2 is 1, so I'll have a linear left over, the leftover term, so I'll have an ax plus b here. Okay, then I'll have, how would this fit into partial fractions? I'll have a c over the x plus 1 and a d over the x plus 2. Okay, and that's the idea we're going to use in the following two examples. Right, so let's have a go at an example. Here we go. We're going to express the following in partial fractions. Now, usually everything we've done relied on the top order being uh, smaller than the bottom. Here, they've both got order 2. Okay, so therefore we could state with these, this is 3x squared subtract 3x subtract 2 all divided by x subtract 1, x subtract 2. The top has order 2, the bottom has order 2. It's a quadratic if you expanded it out. So you will be left with a polynomial of order 0, i.e. a constant term. So you will get something, a number. You will get another number over the first linear factor and another number over the second linear factor. Okay? So... That's our statement here, and what we're going to do is we're going to use a bit of algebra. If we made the the denominators of, of these three terms, x minus 1, x minus 2, so they match this, I could write my next line is 3x squared, subtract 3x, subtract 2, would be equal to a, x subtract 1, x subtract 2, times by both these, plus b, just needs times by x minus 1, plus c, so x minus 2, needs times by x minus 1. And there I go, I've got my equation. Using substitution, I'm going to let x be various things. Firstly, let x equal 1. This would be eliminated, this would be eliminated, and I would get the following. Let x be 1. I would get this side would be negative 2, this would disappear, this would disappear, and I'd get ne uh, negative b. And this would tell me that b is equal to 2. Then I would let x equal 2, because that would eliminate this and this. Substituting in 2 here, I get 4 is equal to, uh, this would go, this would go, and I'd get c. So therefore c equals 4. Lastly, I need to find a easiest thing to choose is let x equals 0. This side would therefore be negative 2. This side here, this would be negative 1 times negative 2, which would be 2a. This here would be negative 2b. This here would be negative c. So negative 2 is equal to 2a. Well, I know, 2B, uh, I know b is 2, so subtract 2b would be subtract 4, and subtract c would be subtract another 4. So if I add 8 to both sides, I'd get 6 is 2a, divided by 2, a is 3. Okay, so they are my a, b, and c. So therefore, if I was to rewrite this, I should do it underneath here, but if I was to rewrite this, a, I'd have the term a, which is 3, plus b, which is equal to 2 over x subtract 1, plus c, which is 4 over x subtract 2 and I'd be done. I've written it in partial fractions. Okay, next example. Uh, example two, we'll do the same thing here. 
To start with, let's note we've got a cubic on top, that's power 3, and on the bottom we have a quadratic if we expanded that out. 3 take away 2 is 1. We will have a polynomial of power 1, i.e. a linear expression when we do this. So we can state our rule. We can say that x cubed subtract x squared subtract x subtract 3, all divided by x, x subtract 1, must be of the form a linear term left over, so ax plus b, okay, and then we would have a, a number c over the first linear factor x and another number d over the next linear factor x subtract 1. Okay, so what we could do is we could multiply uh, up the right hand side so all the terms were over x, x minus 1. And I could write with quite a lot of certainty that x cubed subtract x squared subtract x subtract 3 would be identical to ax plus b, this whole thing here. I'm going to have to multiply this whole lot by x and x subtract 1. Plus c just needs multiplying by x minus 1 and d just needs multiplying by x. Okay, so I have myself uh, my expression there. Now, first things first, uh, what I could notice from this, what's the only thing that on the right hand side that's going to give me an x cubed? Okay, the only thing that's going to give me an x cubed is that times that times that, which would give me ax cubed. On the left hand side, I've got 1x cubed, so this tells me for free that a must equal 1. Okay, so I've got that already. So I can actually say that this thing is equal to x plus b x, x subtract 1, plus c, x subtract 1, plus dx. So I can actually write that, and it will make things a lot easier. Just to clarify that, if you lost that step, on the left-hand side, I've got 1x cubed. I look on the right and see where will I get an x cubed term, not from any of this, but that, multiplied by that, multiplied by that, would give me a lot of x cubed. It would give me ax cubes. So for the two sides to be the same, a must be 1. So I determined that. Now then, I, it's just a substitution game. So why don't we just let um, x equal 0 to start with. This side would therefore be negative 3. Uh, this whole thing would be 0. This would be 0. And we get equal negative c. So therefore, we can determine that c is 3. OK, so we found two of them. Let's make, make x equal 1 now. On this side here, uh, we would get negative 4 is equal to, uh, this would disappear, this would disappear, and we would get d. So this is telling me that d is equal to negative 4. The only thing left to find is b, so let's just choose x to be a quite simple number. Let's choose x to be equal to 2. OK, so the right-hand side, we can use our calculator to work that out. So on this side, when we substitute 2, we get negative 1 is equal to uh, 2 plus b, we would get here. Uh, this would be a 2, and this would be a 1, so it would be multiplied by 2. This whole thing here would end up being plus c, which is plus 3, c is 3. And this whole thing here would be plus 2d, d is negative 4, so this would be subtract 8. So tidying this up, we get negative 1 is equal to 4 plus 2b plus 3, subtract 8. Negative 1 is equal to that plus that is 7. Take what 8 is minus 1, so 2b minus 1. OK, and therefore we would get from this that b actually turns out to be 0, if you solve that equation there. So rewriting this in the right form, a was 1, so I'd have x, plus b is 0, so I'd get plus c, which is 3 over x, and d turns out to be negative 4, so subtract 4 over x, subtract 1, and I'm done. Of course, I could multiply this up at the end to check it all works, but it does work, and this is the correct answer, and we're done. Okay, and so that's all for this particular video. Quite a long one there, but quite uh, important. Uh, just to finish with, make sure you go to the book, read chapter 1, page 7, do the exercise 1E, all questions, and the miscellaneous exercise. And that's it. We've done chapter 1 of the Core 4 course. 
Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that useful.